Good afternoon, Russell Temple and friends. Welcome to our morning worship service. Today is our Connectional Lay Day. Let us come to order. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise unto the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Our opening hymn will be Hold to God's Unchanging Hand by the Male Chorus. Today, our hymn of praise. It's going to be on page 248 in your hymnals. Hold to God's Unchanging Hand. You know the words. Come on, sing along with us. <laughs>
for this worship experience. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Now we will have the invocation by Sister Wanda Wynn. I mean, son, yeah, Sister Wanda Wynn. And the scripture will be by Sister Tiffany Carey at the fourth chapter, 13 through the 21 verses. Amen. How many of y'all know that you can't do nothing unless you worship the Lord and you gotta invite them in, right? And so come with me while I invite the Lord to dwell with us. So good morning, Lord, and brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, we know that you are omnipresent throughout the world. At this time, we ask you and invite you to come dwell with us in our worship service at Russell Temple CME Church today. Let your Holy Spirit reign throughout our lay day service. In the name of your son, Jesus, amen. At this time, then we will have the prayer of, for the laity, Sister Joan Hardy, and afterward, the Minister of Music, the male course. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Good afternoon, everybody, and praise the Lord. May we bow. Heavenly Father, you have called us all to holiness, which means sharing in your divine life. Fill us, Father God, with the sense of our true dignity as those called to be your daughters and sons in the world and your ambassadors of justice, love, and peace. Give us, dear Father, the desire to be worthy of this great calling and the courage to live up to it. We ask all of these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. I was lost, 
you just told us oh give thanks unto the lord say when i was hungry lord you fed me when i was thirsty you gave me flowing water when i was lost thank you jesus you came and you found me you put your loving arms all around all of us so oh give thanks give thanks unto the lord Hallelujah, choir. Hallelujah, church. Thank you, Mel Course, for that song. Now we will have the scripture by Sister Tiffany Carey, Acts, the fourth chapter, 13 through 21. Good morning, everyone. I'm not Tiffany. Technology is playing games with us this morning. So I will be reading Acts chapter three, rather chapter four, verses 13 through 21. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus and seeing the men who had been healed standing with them, the man who had been healed standing with them, they could not say, or they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred that with, among themselves saying, what shall we do to these men? For indeed, that a notable miracle has been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem and we cannot deny it. But so that it spreads no farther among the people, let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak to no man in this name. So they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, not teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. 
for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they left them, they let them go, finding no way to, of punishing them because of the people, since they all glorified God for what had been done. For the man was over 40 years old to whom this miracle of healing had been performed. God's word for God's people. Amen. At this time, we would have the Sherman family to come with the lay dignity. Good afternoon, Chair. My family and I will be reading the lay litany moving forward with boldness. And I'm going to be the leader and my parents are going to be the congregation. And it says, be strong of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou made. For the Lord thy God is with, is with thee, whithersoever thou go. In, In this, O Lord, Lord, do I, do I put, put my trust. trust for God, God hath not, not given, given us the spirit of fear. There are times when we feel overwhelmed and just want to quit. However, the word of God reminds us that they, reminds us they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We move forward with boldness, knowing that God is our refuge a very, very present, present help in times of trouble. As the lady of the church and God's servants, we know we are on a mission to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and go into the world to make disciples. We stand boldly on the word of God, knowing that with God, nothing shall be impossible. Give yes, thanks unto him, him and bless his name. name. For God is good, his loving kindness endureth forever, and his faithfulness unto all generations. And empowered by the word of the Holy Spirit, we are committed to move forward with boldness to do the will of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. At this time, we will have Brother Blair Carey to come with his reading that he won at the lay institute, the lay at the annual conference lay scholarship um, launching, and he will come now with his essay. Good afternoon, church. This is my winning essay, my future legacy. Being successful is one of my top concerns due to me overthinking every decision there is in my life. Trying new things is not something I fear, but failure being an option is. When life finds a way to ruin my mood, it does affect me and I begin to shut down. I turn into my biggest critic and all my negative thoughts start to overflow my mind. Everything seems impossible. Then I remember that I am unloved, that I am loved and a child of God. So I begin to pray and listen to music to clear my thoughts and reassure myself of my sanity. I begin to see things clearly and remember that I am in my heavenly father's image. He made me into a strong soldier. He made me have my hardships, but I grew from my pain. He made me into a loving care and caring person who would give everything he can. He made me, and there's nothing that anyone else can tell me otherwise. <laughs> Bear with me while I try to explain what I want in my future legacy. <laughs> Money is something I everyone has struggled with or currently is struggling with. Some people aren't taught right spending habits and others just like spending. I'm not the last one, promise. <laughs> Companies prey upon those who are financially uneducated and take advantage of them. Some families fall under mid-class and live in apartment complex or trailer parks due to struggles that could have been prevented if educated correctly. From a personal perspective, I was not taught any life skill in high school until my junior year. At the end of my course, my teacher briefly taught us formulas on how to buy a car, a house, and tipping properly. To some to sum everything up, if there is more financial education in the world, poverty would decrease significantly. At Old Dominion University, I plan to pursue the, ma the major of budget, budget analyst. With this education, I hope, to, I hope to help people in my community with their financial struggles and help them micromanage their funds. 
Also, I would be more than happy to assist others who don't understand their financial problems or why certain funds aren't getting taken out. Not everyone is good at something, just like me not being able to put my thoughts on paper. Mm. Seeing fewer starving families and more people being able to succeed and hold on and hold their own in societies financially would be a dream come true. As I come to an end, my future legacy is seeing people financially successful because they had proper teaching of how to manage their money. The system doesn't want to see people of color successful and that needs to change. I want to be that change so people don't have to struggle with the payments of or living. Thank you. Hey, outstanding, outstanding. For the people that don't understand or don't know what happens, every year at annual conference, the lay department um, put out scholarships and the scholarships has been in the past has been a thousand dollars and that scholarship is for each um district and he won from the washington virginia district and you have to be your last year of high school before you go to college so we are very very proud of blair and winning for the washington virginia district for this last year um annual conference. At this time, we will have tithes and offerings appealed by the by Brother Hardy. Afterwards, Sister Hardy will come and introduce our lay speaker for today. Good morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come giving you thanks and praise for all you have done for us. We pray your blessings upon us and this offering. We pray that it will put me in your storehouse so that everyone will have plenty. And Lord, we pray that what we give would do some good to someone along the way. These are the blessing we ask through your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we have four ways to give here at Russell Temple. You have the, the give a fly, PayPal, and the cash app. You can mail it in to Russell Temple, 507 North Africa Street, Alexandria, Virginia, 22314. Or you can take it by the church and drop it off. Same address. Oh. You can contact the steward and let, let them uh, come by and pick it up for you. And also, we are uh, asking you, as you're giving, think about the lay. They are asking everyone to support their department of lay ministry for the Graham Webb Kennedy Scholarship Fund. These funds will help some young CME students across the connection as they pursue their educational goals. Thank you so much. And may God continue to bless you. All things come of these. Good afternoon again. Um, I have the honor of introducing uh, today's late day speaker, none other than Sister Ruby Faye McGee, whom we call Faye McGee. She was born in Durham, North Carolina, and educated in the Durham County and City Schools. Uh, she was a member. She's a born and bred CME. She was nurtured at Russell Memorial. CME Church in Durham. She was active uh, as a young person in the church's total ministry, Sunday School, Christian Youth Fellowship, prayer meeting, 
Bible study, love feast, you name it, Faye was involved with it. Um, as a young adult, she attended Winston-Salem State University where she received a Bachelor of Science degree in music education. And um, she was a member of the Winston-Salem State College Choir and its traveling choir. She is also a member of the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Sister McGee, um, many of us know her as the musician for many of the churches in our area, the CME churches in our area. She um, is a former music teacher. Uh, she taught in uh, Virginia as well as Maryland. And we also know her for her um, contribution to the world, her physical contribution to the world. Uh, and to the to CMEs, because we enjoy uh, their, their work as well. In 1974, she was married to, uh, she married William L. McGee, and they had two sons, uh, Danny and Billy, or Daniel and Billy, and they have, um, they were married, Danny to the Torah McGee, and Billy to um, Reverend Don McGee. And they, she has four grandchildren whom she loves dearly. She says they are the best thing that ever happened to her. And uh, their names are Daniel McGee II, Camille Anaya Mia, or me, May McGee, and Bryce Dwight Lee McGee, and Winston Tamich McGee. So she um, not only is an educator, a musician, but Sister McGee, is the past region lay president for the New York Washington region. She is very knowledgeable of the lay ministry, the uh, lay council um, work and, and the ins and outs and the do's and don'ts for the lay society or the lay uh, council. She was a delegate to the 2010 uh, general conference where she served on the resolutions committee. And I'm gonna stop talking because I probably could talk longer than she's gonna to speak to this to us this morning. So for some I am presenting and to others I am introducing Sister Ruby Faye McGee um, of Lane Memorial Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. Before Sister McGee come, we will now have another a music selection with the I team testimony. Good afternoon, everybody. Oh, thank God for, I got a testimony. I was already kind of wrapped up in that when Louise said something about the General Conference of 2010, because there is my greatest testimony. Oh, never could have made it out of there. <laughs> never could have made it. Good afternoon, Russell Temple. I am so happy to be uh, with you this afternoon. I was just telling somebody, I just love Russell Temple. I just couldn't wait to see how y'all was going to do this. You've done a wonderful job. And I'm so glad to be here. Uh, Doris, my kids call you the Silver Fox. You are looking so good with that beautiful gray hair. You've done a wonderful job, and I thank you for it. Thank you, Sham uh, what's that? Sh Sh Sherman family. Sherman family. Very good job with the um, the litany for today's lay day. Thank you, Louise. I can always count on you. She's another person. She'll never tell you no. If you if you ask her, then she assumes that you are asking because you need her, and then she will answer. And her husband, I always joke and call him Mr. Louise, but I got it right today, Mr. Hardy. Thank you for being here. Thank you all for bringing that male chorus on. You know, I like to see men together. <laughs> Very good job, men. We enjoyed your renditions. I think I have. All right. All righty. <clears throat> I want to thank uh, Reverend uh, Pastor Justice Kevin Agee. Uh, lay ministry leader Louise Hardy, officers, members, and friends of Russell Temple, CME Church. 
in beautiful Old Town, Virginia. It is a real pleasure to see you here today. I've always enjoyed visiting your church and nothing has changed there. I bring you greetings from my pastor, Reverend Kire Patterson and the officers and members of Lane Memorial CME Church, where everybody from everywhere is somebody in the body of Christ. I am thankful to your pastor for his support of lay ministry and this special day, which gives lay men, women, boys and girls the opportunity to speak to our congregations as we grow to serve in the kingdom of God. I thank him and I thank my pastor also. Uh, and we need to count ourselves blessed to have pastors who are supportive of the lay ministries. When I was a young woman, my husband and I welcomed two sons. And as the African-American village is prone to do, people started asking me when I was going to get a girl. Don't you want a girl? You should have a girl. Well, my, my, aunt, my response to that was always the same. The boys will bring the girls in. And so it is my honor to recognize my children, Daniel and Satora, and William and Dawn. They have given to me the lights of my life. Three grandsons, Daniel two, Bryce, and Winston, and one perfectly perky granddaughter, Camille. Thank you all for being here. Please note, my daughters in love have been delivered to me without one labor pain. And were it possible, I dropped the mic right here. Hallelujah. <laughs> May we pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Our topic for today is Bold Faith, Christian Lay, Moving Forward, together. And our scripture reference, which has already been read for us very nicely by um, Sister Hardy, Acts 4, 13, 21. Well, as I read that, I decided to back up. I better back up a little bit just in case somebody doesn't know what we're talking about here this afternoon. So let's start with some background information. The book of Acts. It's the second volume of a unified two-part work that today we call Luke Acts. The two were written by the same author, Luke, who was a traveling co-worker with Paul. This is clear from the book's introduction where Luke says, I produced my first volume, that's the gospel, about all the things that Jesus began to do and to teach. Now Luke's given a, a clue here. What this book, the book of Acts, was all about. Volume one was about what Jesus began to do and to teach, while volume two is about what Jesus continued to do and to teach. Which leads to a really interesting point about the book's traditional but not original name, the Acts of the Apostles. While different apostles do appear in most of these stories, the only single character who unifies the whole story from beginning to end is Jesus himself, acting directly or through the Spirit. And so the book would be more accurately named the Book of the Acts of Jesus and the Spirit. The book's introduction recounts how the risen Jesus spent some 40 days with the disciples, teaching them about the kingdom of God. This connects back to the story of Luke's gospel, 
where Jesus claimed that he was restoring God's kingdom over the world, beginning with Israel. So he called Israel to live under God's reign by following him. And he was enthroned as king when he gave up his life and then conquered death with his love. And so the book of Acts begins with the risen King Jesus instructing his disciples about life in his kingdom. So he promises that the spirit will soon come and immerse them in his personal presence. And this fulfills one of the key hopes from the Old Testament prophets that in the messianic kingdom, God's presence as spirit would come and take up residence among his people in a new temple and transform their hearts. Bold faith, Christian lay moving forward together. Continuing, and so Jesus says when this happens, the spirit will empower his disciples. He says to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the ends of the earth. From here, Jesus is taken up from their sight in a cloud. It's an image drawn from the book of Daniel chapter seven. It shows how Jesus is now being enthroned as the son of man who was vindicated after suffering and now shares in God's rule over the world. And so he promises that he will return one day. And so the main themes and the design of the book of Acts show right out of this opening chapter that this is a story about Jesus leading his people by the spirit to go out into the world and invite all nations to live under his reign. And so this story begins with that message spreading in Jerusalem and then into the neighboring regions of Judea and Samaria for non-Jewish people. And then from there out to all the nations and unto the ends of the earth. So the book begins in Jerusalem with Jesus's followers waiting until the feast of Pentecost when all of these Jewish pilgrims from all over the world, the ancient world, would be in the city. And the Holy Spirit comes on the disciples as a great wind and something like flames appear over each person's head. And together they start announcing and telling stories of God's mighty deeds. And they're speaking in all these languages that they didn't know before, but all the people gathered there understood perfectly. Now, in order to see what Luke is emphasizing in these stories, it's crucial to see the Old Testament root of all these images. So first, the wind and the fire is a direct allusion to the stories about God's glorious, fiery presence filling the tabernacle and the temple. And it's also connected to the prophetic promises that God would come and live by his spirit in the new temple and the messianic kingdom. And so here in Acts, God's fiery presence comes to dwell not in a building, but in his people. Luke is saying, that the new temple promised by the prophet is Jesus's new covenant family, the people of Jesus, which connects to the second thing that Luke is talking about here. So the prophets promised that when God came to dwell in his new temple, he would reunify all the tribes of Israel under the messianic king, and that the good news of God's reign would go out and be announced to the nations. Luke describes in detail the international multi-tribe makeup of all the Israelites who were there 
at Pentecost and who responded to Peter's message. And so the apostles keep calling Israelites to acknowledge Jesus as their Messiah. And thousands upon thousands respond forming new communities of generosity and worship and celebration. But not everybody is celebrating. From here, Luke shows how Jesus' new family quickly faced hostility from the Jerusalem leaders. Here, Luke tells them the tale of two temples. So God's new temple the community of Jesus' followers, they're gathering every day in the temple courts and from house to house. Now, in between these notices are two stories about Peter and the other prof apostles healing people in the temple courts, only to get arrested by the temple leaders, followed each time by a speech of Peter claiming that Jesus is the true king of Israel. And at the center of all this is a story about Jesus' followers donating property and possessions to a common fund to help the poor. This is a practice described in the laws of the Torah and was supposed to be happening through the Jerusalem temple and the leaders. So Luke makes it clear that the new temple of Jesus' community is fulfilling the purpose that God always intended for the Jerusalem temple, to be a place where heaven and earth meet, where people encounter God's generosity and healing presence. So what's the problem here? So far, this seems like a pretty great story. But it also seems that the problem has something to do with accusations against Peter and John. But why? They are apostles of Jesus. What's an apostle? By definition, each of the 12 chief disciples of Jesus Christ is an apostle. So then, what is the problem? In your Bible, I invite you to turn with me to the book of Acts, where I will begin reading at chapter 3, verse 1, and will continue through to chapter 4 and end at verse 12. For interpretation's sake, I will be reading from the Message Bible. So may we begin. Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the three o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, so he could beg from the people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, get up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up, and as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. Amen. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk, then walking, leaping, and praising God. He went into the temple with them. All the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. When they realized he was the lame beggar that they had seen so often at the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. They all rushed out in amazement to Solomon's colonnade, where the man was holding tightly to Peter and John. Peter saw his opportunity and addressed 
the crowd. People of Israel, he said, what is so surprising about this? And why stare at us as though we had made this man walk by our own power for godliness? For it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of all our ancestors, which has brought glory to his servant Jesus by doing this. This is the same Jesus whom you handed over and rejected before Pilate, despite Pilate's decision to release him. You rejected this holy, righteous one and instead demanded the release of a murderer. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead and we are witnesses of this fact. Through faith in the name of Jesus, this man was healed and you know how crippled he was before. Faith in Jesus' name has healed him before your very eyes. Friends, I realize that what you and your leaders did to Jesus was done in ignorance. But God was fulfilling what all the prophets had foretold about the Messiah, that he must suffer these things. Now. Repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. Then times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord and he will again send you Jesus, your appointed Messiah. For he must remain in heaven until the time for the final restoration of all things as God promised long ago through his holy prophets. Moses said, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. Listen carefully to everything he tells you. Then Moses said, anyone who will not listen to that prophet will be completely cut off from God's people. Starting with Samuel, Every prophet spoke about what is happening today. You are the children of those prophets, and you are included in the covenant God promised to your ancestors. For God said to Abraham, through your descendants, all the families of the earth will be blessed. When God raised up his servant Jesus, he sent him first to you people of Israel to bless you by turning each of you back from your sinful ways. These leaders were very disturbed that Peter and John were teaching the people that through Jesus, there is a resurrection of the dead. They arrested them and since it was already evening, put them in jail until morning. But many of the people who heard their message believed it. So the number of men who believe now total about 5,000. The next day, the council of all the rulers and elders and teachers of religious law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest was there along with Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and other relatives of the high priest. They brought in the two disciples and demanded, by what power or in whose name have you done this? Then Peter, hallelujah, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of our people, are we being questioned today because we've done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know how he was healed? Let me clearly state to all of you and to all the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, the man you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. For well, Jesus is the one referred to in the scriptures where it says, the stone you builders rejected has now become 
the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. Our text describes the members of the council and how amazed they were when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. How about it, Laity? Got into Peter's and John's in your congregation? You know what I'm talking about. Men and women who will stand boldly in the congregation and declare what needs to be declared. I used to live with one. My daddy, Talmadge McCallum, the local lay leader of my home church, Russell Memorial CME Church at Durham, North Carolina, who would stand boldly on any Sunday morning as needed and declare whatever he thought needed to be declared. My sister, my brother, and I was slide down in our pews, appropriately embarrassed by, by him as only teens and preteens and teenagers can be. I remember one Sunday morning when daddy got up to admonish the congregation that there was too much talking and too much walking around in the sanctuary in and out the doors during our worship service. I'm only asking you to do what I do, he said. Train your children to visit the restrooms between Sunday school and before church, and they should not have to move until the service is over. As daddy was talking, Mr. Hooks, one of the elders of the church, got up from the wing and started tipping toward an exit. Daddy looked over and saw him, pointed at him and said, now that's what I'm talking about. Hooks, get back to your seat. And of course, my sister, my brother and I slid down in our pews again, trying desperately to become invisible. Daddy always also served as Durham District Lay Leader, and he counted it a privilege to visit the churches on the district supporting laymen and pastors. I thank God for him and the model he left for me. I can also share that Daddy was sought after by the pastors of our district because they knew that they could expect him to listen to their problems and work with them to solve them. I remember a very young Reverend Thomas L. Hoyt coming to our home. And I heard him say before I was shooed from the room, Brother McCallum, I can't feed my family on the salary they're giving me. I can't tell you what daddy did or said but I believed he offered counsel. I also remember a, a young Reverend Raymond Williams, who recently transitioned to glory, who called daddy to report that the people were not coming to church because they felt that he was too young. I can tell you that my daddy went to Little Washington, North Carolina, and walked the streets with Reverend Williams for three days, convincing those laymen to give this man a chance. It worked, and of course, Raymond Williams earned their love and respect. Bold faith, Christian lay moving forward together. And now, Let's visit that scripture designated for today. Acts 4.13 to the end of the chapter. Reading from the Message Bible again, the Word of God says, the members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. 
for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scripture. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. How about it, laity? Are we gifted with bold faith? And are we truly Christian lay moving forward together? As we are out tending to, tending to our business, just running a business, of, you know, of just going about living our best life, as they say, will anybody declare as our witness that we have been with Jesus? I invite you to review the lay ministry mission to reach, teach, and minister to all of God's people equipping them for the greater works and service for him. I urge you to support the Lay Ministries Council for your benefit and for ours, whatever your gifts are. Bring them and place them before God, our maker, and make a difference in your life and in the life of the church. Verse 14, but since they could see the man who had been healed standing right there among them, there was nothing the council could say. So they ordered Peter and John out of the council chamber and conferred among themselves. What should we do with these men? They asked each other. We can't deny that they have performed a miraculous sign and everyone in Jerusalem knows about it. But to keep them from spreading their propaganda any further, we must warn them not to speak to anyone in Jesus' name again. Anybody ever tell you that? <laughs> so they called the apostles back in and commanded them never to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. So how did these bold undereducated men respond to this request? Peter and John replied, do you think God wants us to obey you rather than him? We cannot stop telling about everything we have seen and heard. The council then threatened them for further and they finally let them go because they didn't know how to punish them without starting a riot. Well, everyone was praising God for this miraculous sign, the healing of a man who had been lame for more than 40 years. So all of this discussion was because Peter and John healed a crippled beggar on the Sabbath. How about it, laity? First, they crucified Jesus. Now they're messing with his disciples because they don't believe that Jesus, after suffering a brutal death, rose from the grave, walked the earth, and was taken up in a cloud and sits even now at the right hand of God. And he is coming back again. He is coming back and there's so much work to do because the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few and we need the laity we need laity with bold faith we need laity we need laity with bold faith we need laity because not everyone has heard the story we need Christian laity because we need a laity willing to move forward. We need a laity that will walk together. We need a laity that will embrace this thing, a clarion call to service in the kingdom of our God. We need bold laity. We need faithful laity. Yes, yes. We need Christian laity. We need Christian laity moving forward. 
we need bold faith, Christian laity moving forward together. Bold faith, Christian lay moving forward together. Bold faith, Christian laity moving forward together. Our ministry song says it best. We're asking others to come and join lay ministry work and help to build a stronger church and win more souls to Christ. We know some may not come, but we won't lose the faith, the faith, for Christ the Lord is on our side. With him, we cannot fail. So let us do our best in service of the Lord for Christ the Lord uh, to bring God's kingdom here on earth and win the hearts of man. The chorus says, we're laity, bold faith, God's people, Christian laity, his servants, hallelujah. We are dutiful laity. We are lay who are working for Jesus to build the kingdom of God. Bold faith, Christian lay, moving forward together. God bless you and thank you for the invitation. Amen, hallelujah. Come home, come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is called. Calling, O oh sinner, come home. Jesus loves each and every one of his people unconditionally. Doesn't matter what we have done, how much we have done, how far we have gone astray, how long we have strayed. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is called, calling, O oh sinner, come home. If anyone is watching or listening this afternoon and you're not positive that your sins are forgiven and your soul is saved, it's really easy. Jesus wants everyone to come home. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. It's just that easy. If anyone this afternoon would like to invite Jesus to be the Lord and the Savior of your life, you may, if you feel so moved, unmute and verbalize your desire. You can type a public or private message in the chat. Or if you would prefer something more personal and intimate, more direct with the pastor, you can call or text me, my personal cell phone number, 201-736-9107. That will appear in the chat uh, momentarily. You can also, if you so desire, send me a private message on the social medium of your choice, be it uh, Facebook, be it LinkedIn, be it Instagram, Snapchat, or Twitter. Just Kevin Agee, the first few medium uh, on Twitter is Preaching Turk, but the other social media is just Kevin Agee. You can send me a private message. I'll be glad to reach out to you, be glad to pray for you. But we want everyone to be a part of the kingdom of God. If you're already saved, if you're already a part of the body of Christ and you want to recommit or rededicate your life to the Lord, same way, you can unmute and say so now. You can type a public or private message in the chat or you can reach out to the pastor one-on-one. -on -one. Last but not least, beloved, if you're in search of a church home, we'd love to have you at the Russell Temple Christian Methodist Episcopal Church in the heart of Old Town Alexandria, 507 North Alma Street. Not a perfect church only because there are no perfect people. Jesus himself is the only being who walked the face of the earth in human flesh who's perfect. But we're a loving church, a caring church, a Bible teaching church, a Bible believing church. And we love to have you as a part of this branch 
of God's family tree. Even in this time, we continue to worship virtually for just a little while longer. Still, the church, the doors of the church are wide open on the hinges of welcome. Is there one this afternoon who will give his or her life to Christ? Is there one who will rededicate his or her life to the Lord? Is there one who will join the Christian church? The doors of the church stand wide open on the hinges of welcome. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling for you and for me. Jesus is calling. Will you answer this afternoon? May we bow for a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for another new and beautiful day in your sight. We thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Lord, for your messenger for this afternoon, Sister Ruby Faye McGee. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the powerful message we heard from the sacred scripture. And, O oh Lord, our God, we thank you for establishing your church. We thank you, Lord, for looking beyond our fault and seeing our need. Lord, we pray that you'll bless every precious soul gathered within the sound of my voice. We pray, O oh God, that you'll bless those who are not gathered this afternoon for whatever reason. We pray, O oh God, that you would lay your hand of healing upon all facing health challenges. We pray your comfort, strength, and peace upon all families and individuals who have suffered loss and grief. And Lord, according to the promise of your holy word, we pray that you will continue to supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline thine ear to us and grant us thy peace. In the precious name of Jesus our Christ, we pray. Amen. Everybody, let's give a big round of applause to the caravans.
Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Before we have our doxology and our benediction, can we give God some praise for this connectional Laity Sunday observance? Amen. Can we give God mm -hmm. some praise for our speaker of the hour, our former regional lay leader, Sister Ruby Faye McGee? Did not our hearts burn? As Sister McGee rightly divided the word of truth. Amen. Amen. She was teaching like a theologian. Uh, amen. She was teaching like a seminary scholar. Isn't that right? Amen. Powerful word. Thank you so much, uh, Sister McGee. We give God praise for the lay council at Russell Temple Church uh, under leadership of our lay leader, Sister Louise Hardy. Can we give God some praise? We had a powerful worship experience on this morning. Can we give God praise for our worship leader, Sister Doris Thorne? Amen. To God be the glory, amen. All of our participants in our Connectional Laity Sunday uh, worship experience. And we pray that all of us uh, heeded the uh, admonition uh, from Brother Hardy to uh, contribute, to support our laity, to support our scholarship fund, amen. Our Connectional Lay Ministry invests in dynamic young people, amen, like uh, Brother Blair who uh, so eloquently uh, rendered that uh, outstanding uh, essay that he submitted that, uh, that won the contest at this past uh, annual conference, amen. Like Brother Dylan, you know, who led his family in the, uh, in the, uh, in the uh, laity uh, litany uh, for today, amen. It's a joy to be able to invest uh, in our young uh, future scholars. So we hope that everyone uh, answered the call uh, to support our connectional lay ministry uh, scholarship. We give God thanks and praise for all of you. Uh, certainly, we welcome uh, all of those who are sharing with us today. We see that uh, Sister Faye's pastor, Reverend Coray Y. Patterson, and leaders of the Elaine Memorial Church are with us, of course. Uh, the McGee family is with us. Uh, we see that the Reverend Dr. Ruth Thompson and the, uh, the Reverend Deborah Payton and leaders of St. Matthew uh, with us, amen. Reverend Phyllis Harris, who's a regular with us, and our regional uh, missionary president, Ms. Sandra Renee Chambers, and leaders of the St. John uh, CME Church, are with us, amen. We welcome all of our leaders from our Zone One churches who thought in our robbery to uh, share with us uh, on this afternoon. I also saw uh, Brother Robert, Sister Roberta Bell of my home church, the Israel church with us and of course mrs bell is our uh, elnora p ham a uh, health ministry a uh, leader uh, here in our area we give god thanks and we give god praise for our cme family all of our visitors all of our friends all of our guests all of god's children all members of the body of christ who thought it not robert to share with us this afternoon we give god glory and we give god praise for all of you who counted it not robbery to worship with us on this afternoon. Real quick commercials and I'll be done. And uh, I'm gonna uh, ex exert a little bit of privilege. Uh, I think it'd be appropriate if I invited uh, Sister McGee's pastor to give the benediction if uh, she's so willing. Uh, uh, so after we uh, have the uh, doxology, if uh, the Reverend uh, Coray Y. Patterson, the senior pastor of the Lane Memorial Church, if you would not mind giving us a benediction this afternoon, we'd be honored. Is that all right? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, to God be the glory. Here, here are quick commercials. So one, I believe it started yesterday, but the uh, National Council of Churches is in the midst of 40 days of prayer, 40 days of prayer for the election. Y'all saw one of the slides uh, during the announcements that those who are watching on Zoom and said, vote, vote, vote. Well, we're praying and we need to pray for this election, amen. Not only is it a big, big election because you know a number of uh, United States senators are being elected. Uh, there's a congressional, a couple of congressional elections in the state of uh, Virginia, but we have a gubernatorial election uh, in the state of Maryland. A number of state attorney generals are being elected. We have a mayoral and city council election in DC, as well as an attorney general election. So it's a big election and uh, there are a number of issues that are pertinent, germane to God's people. So we need to be careful about who we elect. So not only do we want to pray for the election, but we want to vote after we pray. Hello, somebody, isn't that right? 
uh, my grandmother, my grandmother kind of helped form my theology when I was growing up. And uh, I ain't learned this in seminary. I learned this from my grandma, Flossie Knapp. Watch as well as pray. Come on, somebody. Isn't that right? So, so we need to vote as well as pray. Isn't that right? We need to pray. And, and we need to pray for God's will to be done. And we need to pray for God to guide us. But after we pray for God to guide us, we need to vote, amen? Whether we wait till election day to do it, but I'd encourage folk to, 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 to early vote, amen? Y'all y'all vote early, amen? You know, go to the early, if you wanna go in person, go to the early vote, the early voting already started in Virginia. You know, if you're able, make use of mail-in voting, amen? Remember, like military folk, or folk who are confined to health institutions or, you know, students who are away at colleges and universities and other states who may be registered here, instead of where they go to school, y'all make sure you effectively use those absentee ballots, amen? Those of you who are able to use provisional ballots, y'all make sure you use the provisional ballots, but we wanna make sure that, that folk vote, amen? Because elections have consequences, amen? Somebody ought to shout that, amen? I mean, type it in the chat, elections have consequences, amen? So we want to be, uh, we want to be mindful of that. We definitely wanna be mindful of that. So that's a commercial number one. Uh, the other commercial for our, um, our Russell Temple family, um, be mindful of our K-Drive and also uh, our um, first Sunday of benevolent offering for the month of November as uh, we want to support uh, our missionaries and ministering uh, to those in our community who are in need. Amen. And last but not least, uh, this week in Bible, it's amazing that, that we heard some of what we heard because we're looking at other chapters of the books of Acts in our Bible study, we you know, we started out with the background uh, for our strategic plan for the church and the vibrant church initiative. So we're looking at the first three chapters of the book of Acts in Bible study. And, and some of what was shared by Sister McGee today, we even talked about when we were looking at Revelation, you know, before General Conference. But uh, this week, uh, we, we broke down the, the story of the day of Pentecost into three, three areas. Last week, we looked at, you know, the coming of the Holy Spirit. In, in, in verses one through 13. This week, you know, oh, Peter, loved, Peter loved to preach, didn't he? Amen. Peter was a preaching somebody, wasn't he? Well, this week in Bible study, we're going to look at Peter's, uh, Peter's Pentecost message. Amen. We're going to look at Peter's Pentecost message in Acts chapter two, verses 14 through 36 this week. So we want to be mindful of that and we want to be attentive uh, to that. And uh, we give God thanks and we give God praise for all of you. To God be the glory for the awesome things that God has done. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. And after the uh, doxology, we'll have the benediction by the senior pastor of Lane Memorial Church, the Reverend Coray Y. Patterson. God bless you and heaven smile upon you. Thank you so much. Let us pray. 
Father God, we thank you for all that our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard today during this worship experience, oh God. God, we pray that as we continue to grow in faith, oh God, that you would encourage us and we would encourage one another to keep moving forward with bold faith. Now to him who is able to keep us all from stumbling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God, our savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Let us all say together, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you today. Amen. Hallelujah.